This is David Hillier here and I am going to be giving a short video on chapter 6 of my book Corporate Finance and the section that I'll be focusing on is section 6.1 and 6.1 relates to net present value. If you've been following my earlier videos then I have covered time value of money there. In this one we're going to be looking at the specific um, investment appraisal tool which is called net present value. I'll go through a number of examples. I'll try and give you a, an intuitive interpretation of net present value. I will give you an interpretation of net present value from the perspective of a finance person but I'll, I will also talk about net present value from the perspe perspective of an accountant as well. We will look at the strengths of net present value and we will also look at the weaknesses of net present value. So I'm hoping that this will last for about 15 minutes. That's my aim. So without further ado, um, we will move forward and um, look at our first example. So you have uh, Alpha Corporation is thinking of investing in a riskless project. We're going to ignore risk at this stage. Uh, I'm going to extend it in a minute. Uh, but let's just think of a riskless project and the project costs us £100. So our initial investment is £100. Now I'm going to call that C0. C0 is a cash flow and it takes place at time zero. So we call it C0. And given that it's an outflow, we will have a negative value and the value is 100, so it's minus 100. In one year time, we have a cash inflow and that cash inflow is positive because it's an inflow and it's 107. Now in this example, we talk about a discount rate being 6%. I will speak a bit more about that in a second, but for now, let's just assume that the the rate the appropriate rate to discount to future cash flow is six percent. So how do we calculate the net present value? Well, the net present value is very simple. We net out the investment which we make today with the present value of all future cash flows. There's different ways in which you can do it. You you see the formula here. Um, you could write that down, minus 100 plus 107 divided by 1.06. This component here is the present value of the cash flow of 107 that takes place one year from now. The present value of a cash flow that takes place now is the cash flow itself. If I was going to write this in a spreadsheet, I, I would do something along these lines. Um, so you've got C0 and C1. We can align to the right and we can write cash flow. So it's minus 100 and 107. We now want to find the present value of those cash flows. So I have PVCF. What we'll do is instead of saying C0, uh, C0 and C1, I'm going to put 0 and 1 and we'll put time here. And the reason for that is that I can use the same formula and use the, the dates uh, as they appear. So we want to find the present value of each cash flow, so it's minus 100 divided by 1 plus the 6% and I'm going to make it an absolute cell reference. On Windows you would type the F4 key with the cursor over uh, the cell reference. On the Mac you would use Command T and that gives you the same thing. So it's 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power 0. And you'll see that that's just 100. And by doing that, I can copy that across. The reference here is, it because it's absolute, it's anchored to that particular cell. And it's, uh, it doesn't matter where you copy that formula, it'll always just relate to that cell. So we have 100, present value is, minus, is 100, 
And the present value of 107 when it's discounted at 6% is just a bit above 100. So what's the NPV? Well, the NPV, we just add the present values. 0.94. Now, NPV stands for net present value. And what it does is it offsets or compares the investment with the present value of all the cash inflows from that project. If the net present value is greater than zero, you accept the project. The net present value is less than zero, you reject the project. Very straightforward. Okay, and this is our investment rule as you see in the, the next slide. Accept the project if NPV is greater than zero, reject if it's less than zero. What happens if it's equal to zero? Well, it means that you're indifferent between taking it or not taking it. Now, in the book, I go into this in a lot of detail and um, uh, I talk about three main strengths. One is that this method uses all cash flows. Uh, it uses all cash flows. Other methods don't use all cash flows. The payback period, which I'll discuss in a different video, only uses those cash flows that allow you to work out how long it takes for you to make your money back. Um, in this method, NPV method, you're using every single cash flow. So that means that you're using mo as much information about the cash flows as possible. The other thing is, is that you're, you're using cash flows themselves. Uh, instead of using accounting figures that may need to be adjusted to reflect um, discrete payments of bills, for example, we're using actual cash as it comes in, as it goes out. And the, f the final uh, strength in the NPV is that uh, um, you're, you're taking into account that the the, the risk of the cash flows, you're taking into account the timing of the cash flows. I cover this in chapter 4 and there is a video uh, where I discuss cash flows and I discuss time value of money. Um, and what we say is that if you incorporate risk of cash flows and you incorporate the timing of cash flows, then you are incorporating the time value of money. So there are the, the three main strengths of MPV. What are the weaknesses of MPV? Well, most academic books don't really emphasise the weaknesses of MPV. I, although I, I write about this in the book, um, I have to say that in practice when I, when I talk to, to big European corporates, one of the big issues with, with MPV is that, first of all, you've got to calculate a discount rate. You've got to come up with an appropriate discount rate. You're not going to have a risk-free investment. There's always uncertainty in the corporate world. And you're also thinking about forecasting cash flows into the future. Now, the average analysis um, in practice can be between five and ten years Um you know, if, if I'm a big corporation and I'm looking to set up warehouse facilities, my investment horizon won't, won't just be over the next few months. I'll be thinking forward five, ten years. And you have to forecast cash flows. And by forecasting the cash flows, you have to think, well, what are the future economic envi environments going to be? Uh, what's it going to be like next year? What's it going to be like three years from now? Are we going to see inflation increasing or are we going to see inflation decreasing? Is the project that we're going to invest in, is it going to be successful? How is competition going to affect us? All of these things you have to forecast and from those forecasts you then have to then come up with a cash flow forecast, you have to come up with a, a P&L, a profit and loss um, statement to work out the tax payments. NPV has an issue in that, okay, you are using all information, you are using all cash flows, but the forecasts of your cash flows get steadily noisier as you go into the future. 
think about, you know, look look five years back from now, you know, and think what you were doing five years ago, and then think, forecast forward, you know, five years ago, and if you were to forecast at that point in time and say, well, what what would I be doing five years from now? Do you think you're doing what you thought you were you would be doing? Are you making as much money now as you thought, or you might be making more money? Then forecast ten years ahead. Think back to what you were doing ten years ago. Look at the environment. Look at the world. Ten years ago, we had no iPads, we had no iPhones. Um, Touchscreen technology wasn't here. Just think of sat nav wasn't even here ten years ago. Mobile phones probably weren't here ten years ago. Um, yeah, the, well, the good mobile phones <laughs> weren't here ten years ago. So think forecast forward ten years. My goodness, you know, it's so difficult to to forecast accurately. And you actually have, it's a, it's a bit like a funnel where you, you know, your your forecast accuracy goes like this. If this is, um, uh, I suppose, a confidence interval, you've got uh, upper limit and lower limit. So as you go forward in time, the amount of noise and future cash flows can be massive. So... You might be using all available information, but your uh, the information that you're using might be measured with error, and that can be a, that can cause a lot of difficulty. And I know a lot of corporations actually think that that is unacceptable, and that's why you, they use payback period. They use payback period because they say, "Well, look, we can't forecast ahead really that well over three years or four years." So what we're doing, what we're willing to do, is to try and forecast over the next three years max. And if we don't make our money back within three years, then you know it's not going to be good uh, because of the amount of uncertainty over the longer term. And we will use NPV. So if we can create value within the next three years, um, then then it's good to go forward with the project. But if we you know, if we can't create value over the next three years or we can't make our money back, then it might not be a worthwhile investment. And that's what businesses do. You know, theoretically, it might not be the best thing to do, but it's, in reality, f- from my experience, and my experience might not be the best experience, but in my experience, I actually find that corporations don't like to forecast to that, you know, that far ahead in advance just because of the uncertainty in the economy even in developed economies um, there is a lot of uncertainty think of the eurozone crisis um, even think of the the global credit crunch um, you know that's happened over the last few years so I, I have spent time on the, the strengths and I go into that in a lot a lot of detail in the book but I felt that in, with this particular video that uh, I would talk to you about some of the weaknesses as well now I did say also that I would speak about MPV from the perspective of an accountant and also from the perspective of of finance. I have to put my hands up and say that I don't think my book uh, goes into this in in as much detail as it should and for the next edition I definitely will be uh, putting more in in this point. If I'm an accountant and uh, what what, what you do in terms of your, your investment appraisal is you say right okay Let's try and work out uh, the profit uh, that we're going to get and forecast the profit going into the future. So let's just assume, let's just assume just now that cash flow equals profit. Right, so we make, um, you know, we invest 100 and we make a profit of 107. So it means that, you know, how much net profit are we making? Well, it's, it's 7. Uh, why? Because it's 107 minus 100, right? Very simple, okay? Uh, and we're dealing with accounting statements, and we're just assuming that accounting profit is the same as cash flow. There are no, um, there are no delays in payments, uh, and uh, there's no depreciation. There's no, there's no accounting manipulations there. And the accountant would say, "Well, you make a profit, so we should go ahead and invest." Uh, let's even assume that it's 103. So if it's 103, accountant says, well, you're making a, th- a three euro profit, so you should invest. But the finance person will say, oh, wait there, um, you've got 6% discount rate. If we discount those cash flows, take into account the time value of money, 
you actually get a negative NPV, so you should reject it. So the accountant says you should accept the project, and the finance person says we should reject it. Now, what is the finance person actually saying here? The finance person is saying there are other investments out there of the same level of risk that will give you a return of 6%. That's how we define the discount rate. It's the risk of uh, an a-, a financial asset of the same risk that you can invest in. So the finance person is saying, well, we've actually, we're comparing two investments. We're comparing this investment, 100, get 103 back, with another investment, and that's your alternative investment that gives you 6%. And so the finance person is saying, well, this isn't actually making you any money. It's not. It's making you a, giving you a profit of three, but in actual fact, you can make a profit of six. Why can you make a profit of six? Well, if you invest a hundred and you're getting a return of a hundred and six, then what the profit you can make elsewhere is going to be a hundred and six. And then remember, I'm assuming that profit here is just a, a clear cash flow profit, there's no adjustments, there's no delays in, in payments, uh, etc. So that's what the finance person is saying. The finance person is comparing this investment with another investment that is available of the similar risk that gives you 6%. So that is that's a key to the, 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 the differences between the accountants and the, the fin- financial uh, analysts. The accountant says, looks at the project on its own and says that you make uh, a profit of three. The finance person would say, how does this project compare to a similar project of the same risk that gives you uh, the market rate of 6%? And the finance person says, well, in actual fact, you can get the, you can get 6% elsewhere, so don't invest in this project. You are making three pounds or three euros profit, you're getting three euros in cash, but you can actually get six euros elsewhere. So the finance person would argue for the other project. Now, what would happen if the company rejects this project and says, well, this isn't going to add any value because the MPV is minus 2.83 and does nothing with the money? Well, if, you know, if they reject the project but don't actually invest it elsewhere, then the 100 that you've got is just going to be 100 next year, which means that you get a zero profit. And so the accountant goes, you stupid finance person. You told us not to go forward with this project. You rejected it and then you did nothing with the money. So NPV assumes something that we don't really go into in a lot of detail in, in the book, and, and you actually don't see it a lot in any books, if, if truth be told. That finance assumes that if you reject a project because of this discount rate, that you will use that money elsewhere. If you don't use the money elsewhere, if you just reject a project and don't do anything with the money, then it's not. It's going to be a suboptimal decision, and the finance person will make the wrong decision. So MPV leads to a decision that says, um, if you reject a project, you should be investing elsewhere at that rate. And that is the key to MPV. And I wanted just to spend a little bit of time, because it's good to, to think about the intuition underlying MPV. Um, and the mecha- mechanics is straightforward. All you do is you just find the present value of all cash flows. You sum them. You end up getting the net present value, and that's the sum of the inflows plus the sum of the outflows in terms of present value sense. So I hope that that has provided some insight into MPV, and I will be covering investment and appraisal and the other methods of investment appraisal in other videos.